Good evening and welcome to our forum for the Independence City Council's third and fourth districts was set up, but we only have representatives from District 3 here tonight on the February 6th Independent City Council primary election. This forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Kansas City, Jackson, Clay, and Platte Counties. I am Anitra Steele and I am a member of the League. The League of Women Voters is a trusted grassroots nonpartisan organization with members doing hands-on work to safeguard democracy. While we neither endorse or oppose candidates or political parties, we are directly involved in sharing the important issues. Our mission is to empower voters and defend democracy. We envision a democracy where voters, where every citizen has the knowledge, the right, the desire, and the confidence to participate. Our membership is open to everyone. I'd like you all to know the other league members volunteering for us. Our timer is Cheryl Barnes. Our Zoom is monitored by Terry Lane. We lead our, I lead our forum's admin team. The public has sent in the questions via the league's website, lwvkc.org. Tonight, we welcome our moderator, Sandy Eads. Uh, welcome all, and uh, guys, thanks very much for, for joining us on these, uh, this Independent City Council Forum. Uh, we're going to hear, obviously, just from three candidates from the 3rd District. These forums last about 90 minutes, uh, and I'll ask each candidate the same question selected from those submitted by the public. The order of candidate responses has been determined by random rotation. Each candidate will be given 90 seconds to respond to each question. Um, and two minutes for a closing statement. All candidates running for this office have been invited. And uh, we welcome uh, the candidates uh, participating in tonight's forum from District 3, Mr. Kenneth Love, Mr. Nick Huff, and Mr. Edward Butch Nesbitt. Gentlemen, uh, this forum will re be recorded and will be available on the League's webpage, lwvkc.org. So uh, obviously we need to add, answer the question asked. Uh, there are no rebuttals, but you can go back to an issue if you need to in the closing remarks. Uh, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, we'll reverse the order of closing remarks from the order used in question one. So uh, let's get started with questions. Um, first of all, let's, uh, let's do this introduction. Just introduce yourself and tell us what motivated you uh, to run for city council. And we're going to start with uh, Mr. Nesbitt. Hello, Edward Nesbitt here. Uh, yes, I decided to run for city council because I'm on the planning commission and on the street commission. And I got a lot of questions, but we can't seem to get answers out of what council people are setting up for right now. So I figure if I get was able to get on the council, I can probably answer some of these questions for people since a lot of questions I asked seem to go unanswered or ignored or something like that. And I think we're there for the people and they ask questions, we should give them answers. So that's why I'm running for city council. Very good. Uh, Mr. Huff. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nick Huff. Um, I live in the third district, obviously. I'm married, raised, have a son, seven years old. I gr grew up in Independence. I went to Bryan Elementary High School. Uh, William Chrisman. Um, I have a bachelor's degree at Park University where I played collegiate baseball. I am a small business owner, um, also a member of the charter committee. I have uh, chosen to run because I've been following independence politics for about seven years now, and I'm, I'm seeing no change up there. Um, very few are listening. If, um, so I would like to be a voice for the citizens. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Love. Good evening. First, thank the uh, women's voters for having this uh, forum for the District 3. My name is Kenneth Love. I'm running for city council because I am passionate about this city and its people. I am straightforward 
in my approach. I am compassionate and caring. I am approachable and engaged with the community. I am on behalf of the people. Experience working, volunteering at grassroots of organizations. I am a local business investor owner that follows the rental ready program and the laws of the city of independence. My motivation was three ex council people. My first one, Lucy Young. My second one is Karen DeLucy. And last is uh, Mike Steinmeier. Thank all three of them for inspiring me about eight years ago. Eight years ago, I did run for this position. I was told it wasn't the right time. I have great heart. I have good feelings. I show passionate and love for my Equal city. To cut you off there. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Uh, We're not seeing a timer. Oh, it should be on your screen. Um, question number two, and we're going to start, uh, Nick, with you. Okay. As a city council member, which individuals or groups would you rely on to provide advice regarding such things as zoning changes, code enforcement, and priorities for city funds? Would these be drawn from groups like neighborhoods, homeowners associations, developers, the business community, or someone else? Um, I think that you have to listen to all. Um, you start with the neighborhoods, obviously. Um, you go the businesses, um, then you get to the community. But I think everybody's input is important. Um, you, you can't select, have one selective group you listen to. You have to listen to everyone. That's, I think, the problem now out there. So I you got to be diverse. Listen to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, um, Edward? So basically, I do sit on the planning commission, so I do hear a lot of different inputs from different places. Uh, we definitely need to listen to the people out there because it's their neighborhoods. We need to listen to them, what they would like to see. Uh, I mean, we have business owners also that are in the neighborhoods, and they like to have their input also. So basically we need to listen to all the people's inputs and we need to tell them why we're making certain decisions, not just do the decisions and not tell them why we need to give them answers why we were voting this way and not just vote. Cause I mean, lots of these votes that we see up there, they just vote now say why you can always say why you're doing something for, for the people. And that way they know why you're doing it. And then you can, discuss with them, just not just walk away from them and not give them amp answers. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, Ken. Well, very interesting question. I personally feel you need to listen to all stakeholders. I have watched over the years, people come to city hall and their emotions and speaking and council standing there, oh, I'm sorry, sitting there, and what do you want me to do? Looking in the air. Um, it takes a group effort from city management to council to the residents. And if the council's not listening, the residents are going to talk, and they're going to talk louder. And then it becomes election time. And that's where their vote counts, is at the ballot box. Thank you. <clears throat> Cheryl, uh, let's do a 30 second time here. And I'm gonna have you guys follow up on something uh, in the same order we did this. Uh, Mr. Huff, what process would you use to get this sort of input? Give, give me a little idea of the, it's good to say we'd like to listen to everybody, but tell me a little bit about your methods. Well, you'd start with um, a lot of these neighborhoods have, like my own, have uh, HOAs, which have meeting and, or quarterly or monthly meetings. Um, 
a lot of them have neighborhood pages. Um, the council meetings are another good place. Um, you know, if, if, if you have a bit like, say, for instance, you have a business going in close to a community or neighborhood, um, then people are going to be either yay or nay for it. So you have to listen to them. Then you have to listen to the business owner side. So this is this is a hard thing to cram into 30 seconds, but we're going to attempt anyway. So uh, uh, <laughs> Edward, uh, you're you're in the lightning round now. I'm in the lightning. OK, well, like I say, I sat on the planning commission, so I do see a lot of neighborhood HOAs come up and tell their response to certain zoning aspects and how they want to be zoned and things like that come through. So you got to listen to the HOAs. You might have to go to the meetings. Uh, definitely on city council, you need to listen to the planning commission meetings. Probably need to listen to all the other meetings and get their response also, because that's what they're there for to give recommendations and not just go off your own thinking. I mean, we need to listen to people that we put in these positions. You bet. Ken. Well, mine's real sweet, short, and simple. I personally feel you must seek experience, advice, expert research. Without seeking experience, advance, advice, resources, and listening, you're beating up the bad tree. Good enough. All right. The third question here, uh, Edward, this is for you. Uh, what three independent city public services that serve residents, what are the three city services that serve residents well? And what are the three services that with which you have concerns? Okay. So what served the citizens well would have to be your police. They served the citizens well. Uh, another one would be the, our streets. I mean, we have street people out there. They got to fix the streets. They serve the citizens. And then we're also probably going to have to look at, um, trying to think of a third one that would be really good that we need to look at. But back on the, on the streets, the things we need to look at, is we have a street tax, and I sat on that commission, and we asked questions, and we can't even get answers. So we need to look closely of why our streets are what like they are. We passed this tax several years ago to improve our streets, but our streets are not getting improved. So that is one thing we need to look at closely. Uh, as to the police thing, we all know that the police building is falling apart, they say, and people have turned it and everything. And we need to really look at building them a new place, but we, we keep kicking it down the road, kicking the can. We need to quit doing things like that. We need to get on it and get it done and tell the people this is why we plan on what we need to do. Let's not wait. They're wanting to wait a year or two. Why are we waiting? It, everything just goes up. We need to do it right away and get going with it and not postpone things like that. Thanks very much. Uh, before we get started here, uh, Cheryl, do we need to, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Love, can you adjust your uh, phone to be gallery view so you can see everybody and the timer. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Like we are. I'm good. Can you see the timer? How... Can you I'm see the timer? Very... No, I cannot see the timer, but I'm not very technical. And these right, types so, of tools. So when I wave my hands, you're done. <laughs> we'll, we'll go low tech here. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's pick it back up again. Then, uh, yes, Ken, sir. let's talk about uh, the the three things that you think are doing uh, doing well with providing city services, and and which three need improvement. Wow. Well, let's start with some of the things that I like. IPNL is doing a great job keeping the, uh, the residents' electricity and businesses' electricity on. The community office and fire department addressing the homeless. Where do I go here? I don't like it that our city council, our mayor, our city manager will not listen and enforce the city charter. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, Nick? Um, IPO is doing a great job keeping our lights on. The police department is doing a great job keeping us safe. The fire is also doing a great job. Um, where we need improvements, uh, council for sure, the mayor's office. Um, I think we can do a better job of communicating, especially with the you know the roads. Not so much Independence roads are that do they keep up as much as they can, but um, we need somebody to get on to like the state like. 23rd, for instance, is horrible and it's a state, high, state highway, I re realize, but we need to get somebody that's doing, to get on them to get our roads fixed a little faster. Um, other than that, that's probably about it. Okay. Um, again, we're gonna come back to you here and this is kind yeah. of uh, along the same lines. Uh, what is one idea of yours that could save the city of Independence significant money? Ooh, saving money. Hi, where do you want to start? Excellent, excellent question. It's real easy answer. We need to run our city like a business. Every dollar counts. Every department are in need. Stop wasting money on studies that we already have the answer to. Thank you. Very economical use of time. Um, let's see, uh, Edward, how about you? Best money saving idea for the city? Beth, uh, Ken had it right on the head. We need to quit paying for all these studies. I mean, there is so many studies out there. I mean, we're raising 30, 40, 50, $100,000 on studies that, yeah, we get a study, but the next thing you know, two years later, well, let's do another study on, see what's happening. See, we're kicking things down the road. They don't go with the study because they probably didn't like it or something. But I'm saying, yeah, we waste so much money on studies for certain things. I mean, that that is a, something like that. We could clean up and save a lot of money by quit doing most of the studies. I mean, we should have in-house people to do some of this stuff. We have engineers. I don't know why we can't have them do that. So there's things like that that can save money. Okay. Thanks very much, Nick. What do you think? Um, yes, that goes along with it. Uh, the studies, we waste money. We've had numerous IPL studies. Instead of spending all this money on studies, we need to spend our money like to generation that would save the city money on electric rates as far as residential and businesses. Um, so we could use our money better spent, which will, and, and at the end of the line, will save all citizens money. Thanks. Very good, thanks. Uh, Ken, uh, this one is a little bit of a shift here. Uh, a front page article in the Star uh, last Sunday, I think it was, found that the Independence Police pursue lawbreakers with high-speed chase more than any other area police, leading to the deaths of innocent bystanders. What kinds of changes do you think need to be uh, enacted? Well, first of all, we need a council. We need a mayor. We need a city manager to stand up to other areas within Jackson County. Uh, but this is strictly independence. Because, um, so real easy, we, we need a grappler for our cars. Um, we need more tools for our police cars. We that the tool will reach and grab the cart and pull it back. Um, we need to, to realize of what time of the day that these high-speed chases are happening and call them off quicker before they really get exhalated. But what it really comes down to is our police department enforcing the rules that we have, expired license plate. People with warrants, um, vehicles that have paper tags. When you start addressing the, the petty crime is what they want to call it because it's stolen vehicles, it's tags that are expired, um, no license plates of the vehicles that are in these high-speed pursuits. So until you stop kicking it down, 
I'm sorry, I see your hand. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, yeah. Let's see, uh, Nick, how about you? So um, we have to, the chasing, you, you can't just let everybody go. You have to enforce, but the problem is we need enforcement when somebody does something illegal or whatever, they need to be held accountable. You can't just slap them on the back and see you later. I know we have the police chase. We have expired tags, like Ken said, um, the paper tags. I know I did some research uh, since December 1st. The police have had uh, 361 tickets with no plates and uh, with and uh, 354 with no insurance. That's pretty scary. Um, the problem is, is they're not when they're committing a crime, just like as far as that chasing, they need to hold these people accountable, put them, put them away for a while, just not let them go back out on the streets. Same with the license plates, stuff like that. Maybe take their licenses away, just hold people accountable for their actions. And that might help a lot of this. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Edward. Okay. For the police pursuits. I mean, I do see that we do a lot of those. I've heard in the past, we do a lot of those. I mean, we probably need to get better at, automation on the light controls so that we can help keep from having wrecks and things when police are doing chases. I'm sure we have some, but we don't have enough of them. And then also probably to come back to, we don't have enough personnel on the roads to help with police state chases. So, I mean, if we had more personnel on the road, we could do roadblocks and throw the knife sticks out and stuff like that. So basically that would be more help would be getting more personnel on the road to help stop these chases. So that's why I see it. And like I say, they're both both the guys say the same thing. We just need to enforce the rules, and these people need to be held accountable if they're running around without no license and insurance, things like that. And that's that's things that, I mean, we got to quit just slapping hands. We need to get hard nose on it, probably. It's what the thing needs to happen. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Edward, we're going to stick with you here. And the next question uh, is a little shift here. <clears throat> IPL. Which I've come to know means independence, power, and light. Is a municipal electric company managed by the mayor and elected officials? How much money will the rate restoration generate, and what will it be used for? So, well, how much money will the rate restoration make? I mean, I, I don't have the answer for that. It's I a mean, public I public question. I I don't know either. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have the answer for that, but. The way I see it, it is a public utility. It's something that the city really has, which we should keep. Keep. I mean, we need to keep it because you see that the mandates are coming down that they want everybody to have electric cars. Well, we got to have the power for these electric cars. We know a couple of years ago we went through power outages when Texas ran into problems down there, and we're getting power from Texas, I guess, and things like that. We need to keep our own power. We need to make our own power. I mean, I seen Kansas City or they went out and built all these new uh, coal plants that are up to par. We just need to fix our coal plant to make it work. And then we need to get into more generation stuff. Like I know Kenneth's going to come back to, it's going to be the nuclear. And I'm sure we can look into that. So that's something we need to do to keep this going. Cause we have our city ground and we supply, I think power to other cities around. So we need to keep going with this so that we can keep our power going. That's why I see it. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Nick, how do you see this? Um, I don't know about the rate thing you were asking, but we need generation. That's for sure. Um, that should be one of our top priorities. Um, we can't depend on other people. Um, in the future, electricity is going to be gold. Um, as they close down these coal plants throughout the Midwest, it's going to become more and more scarce. So we need to figure out which way we're going as far as generation. Um, as far as we can't sell it, um, we don't want to be dependent on Evergy and have them control our thermostats and everything else. We need to be do our own thing um, and figure out which road we're going to take and buying it. So that's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Um, Ken, what do you think? Well, as the other two candidates said, the first part is really uh, deeper investigating. I am the only candidate that has been preaching this for the last four years. It's hard to generate more business when we cannot 
reduce crime, homeless, or even generate our own power. I'm in favor of building a new power plant. I'm in favor of a word that most people don't like to hear is a nuclear power plant. The reason I state it this way is we've had so many IPNL studies. City management's wanting more studies. That study's not coming back till June. It's most likely going to come back as the same as the other studies. We need to stop kicking this can down the road, wasting city money for more and more studies when we already know we need a power plant. It needs to be bigger. It needs to be better, more efficient, cleaner, so we can provide electricity around the state. Thanks. We're going to stay with you, Ken, on the next one. And this is sort of surfaced a little bit in earlier comments. What resources and procedures would you recommend for decreasing the homeless problem? Great question. Um, doing a little studying of it. I've actually visited homeless camps. Um, takes a lot to get in to see and spend a night at one. Um, first off, ARC. Paid workers to clean up our city that's been doing it with MoDOT, um, Good Shepherd. There's not one single plan around this. And so many, so many people have different um, feelings of how to push or what to push or what not to push or an excuse for this or an excuse for that. It's real easy. As council member, I've been there. I've done it. I know what it's about. All right. Thank you. Um, Edward, homeless problem. Well, the way I see it on the homeless problem, I mean, if you go back, oh, let's say 10, 15 years ago, we didn't have much of a homeless problem that I remember. I mean, we used to have a hospital out there that took in people um, for different things that people are having problems with. So I'm wondering if we just have to get better suited for handling people with problems. I mean, there's lots of different outlets for people to use. I mean, there's several of them. Ken just mentioned a couple of them. There's so many outlets. The problem is, is getting these people to the proper places. I know we have police officers that do things like this, but there's also these people that don't want help. And if they don't want help, we need to get them out and get them move them on out down the road. I mean, if they don't, if they don't want to help, we can't just leave them sitting in places and making trash. And I'll, I ain't hear they even set dumpsters on fire and things like that. We need to get them out of our city and on down the road. If they don't want to help, we just need to get them moved on down the road. All right, Nick. Yeah, um, the homeless issue. It's obviously a nationwide problem. Um, I think starting, we need to, um, get, we need to get them to help. Um, maybe there, I know there's some ordinances about panhandling stuff, maybe instead of more enforcement, as far as people giving money to the people on the, the corners, maybe give them to the churches, the community services, um, help them that way where the church will help them. Um, maybe for some that are capable of maybe some workforce training. Um, I know we got all these um, warehouse and stuff. There's going to be jobs. Maybe the ones that are capable um, give them an opportunity for some workforce training where they have a meaning in life. Maybe that would help them get off the streets. Um, things like that. I think mostly just enforce, you know, just give them a chance of some way or help besides just giving them money on a corner. Thanks. Thank you. Um, somebody mentioned the charter earlier, and it turns out we have a question on this, and it's fairly broad, but Nick, we're going to stay with you on this. Do you support updating the city charter? And I, 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 I'm going to add to their question, and if so, why? Um, yes, it, I was actually on that committee that updated it. Um, we 
we've shortened it a lot. Um, I think it'll be up to the voters on how they want to perceive it. There's some stuff I agree with. There's some stuff I didn't. Um, it definitely, I think, needs to be updated. I think the biggest problem is how you're going to present it to update it to the people. You can't just do one big lump sum of, of that. You have to figure out how you're going to break it up for people can actually vote on what they want, what they don't, because you might like some of our suggestions, you might not like the others. So, um, and all, yes, it needs to be updated because it has not been updated in a very long time. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, Ken. Excellent question. And for whoever asked a question about the city charter, thank you very much. We have a problem right now. We have a city charter that no one that sits on council, city manager, or mayor wants to address. There's things in the charter that talk about elections. There's things in the charter that talk about who knows where you want to go with it. But wherever you go and you bring it to your councilman, oh yeah, I know all about it, I've heard that. Or you bring it to the mayor, they're the same thing. Well, if you've heard this, why are we standing here not enforcing what has been written years ago? You want to make these big changes? If I want to dig deep into changes, maybe some. But this is going to take a vote because this city charter belongs to the residents of Independence. It don't belong to Kenneth Love. It don't belong to Nick Huff or Butch Nesbitt, it belongs to the residents. And I see no way to make a big change as quickly as they're wanting because you can barely get information to the residents now. How are you going to get that much information? Yeah. Um, Butch? Yeah. Okay, so on the uh, charter, yes, um, like everybody's saying, it needs to be updated. It's been years. But the problem is, the way I see it, you're going to try to update this charter. You can't just go in there and update the whole thing and expect people to vote on that whole complete change. You're going to have to do like Nick said. It's going to have to be piecemealed together. And it's going to take several different things, or it's going to be several different questions at one time. But I have a feeling they're going to try to kick it down the road a little bit to do changes in this charter. So I don't think they'll probably put it all out there at one time. I mean, Nick was good. He was on the charter committee, so he had some good recommendations and stuff. And basically, he got to listen to all the complaints and all the different changes they want to do. I did not get to listen to all of them. But, I mean, the charter, like Kenneth says, they don't follow it up there, and I don't understand why. That is what the charter is there for. We're supposed to follow it. So... I mean, if we're going to make changes, we need to follow what's there first before we make changes and get the city running in the proper way that the charter started as. I mean, these people were smart when they made it. I mean, they weren't no dummies back then. So basically, the updates are really for the new changes in way uh, new things have come out. So that's what the changes would be. But we just need to follow the charter that's written. Yes, okay. A uh, real shift here. You guys are kind of famous for your school district's uh, school week. So uh, we're going to start, uh, Edward, with you. Independent School District has a four-day school week. Should it be continued or should the district return to a five-day schedule and why? And this question, have you been personally affected by the change? Edward Butch. Oh, you starting with me? Okay. Well, I'm sure you're starting with. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Uh, so the, the school change, the four day a week. Uh, honestly, I don't know how it's going. I mean, I do see it uh, happening in Independence. I see their buses and running. I, without getting information from the school district, I wouldn't know how it's running and if it's going good. Uh, to my effect, it has not affected me at all in any way because my kids are grown. What do you hear so, in the I community? Mean, what, what do you hear in the community? What I hear in community, I really haven't heard anything in the community about it. I mean, I heard a lot of negative about it when it was first come 
before it came into effect because, I mean, you have people that go out and work five days a week, but their kids only go to school four days a week. So there, there's a problem right there. It has to do with daycare, I'm sure, a lot of it. So, I mean, the thing is, is whether they handle that properly, I'm thinking they do because I think the schools are still open. I still think they have the daycares. I know some of them do for independent residents. So, I mean, honestly, I can't answer that personally because I have not really heard that much about it. Okay. Nick? Um, it does not affect me either. Um, I have a kid, but we're actually Blue Spring School District. The way independence is split up. Um, my thoughts, I'm not a big fan of the four-day school week. I think it's more for rural areas. Um, I think we're too big of a population to have a four-day week. I don't think it affects so much the older kids, but the grade school kids that the parents have to work where they can't watch themselves, I think affects most of them the most. Um, I just think, my honest opinion, I think kids need to be in school five days a week as much, much as they can. But like I said, it doesn't affect me. So I don't know how they, I don't, I haven't heard how it affects people if they're complaining or not, but that's just my point. Um, when I went to school, I always wanted to go. So more school, the better, but that's how it is. <laughs> I, 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 I remember that and me too. <laughs> Ken, what do you think about, what do you think about this issue, Ken? Um, first off, it doesn't affect me. Uh, yes, I do have a son. Um, he's a uh, United States Marine. He's also a pastor uh, down in uh, South Houston, Texas. So it really hasn't affected me because my son has grown. I don't think at this present time, we're going to know our very true answer if a 44-day week to a five-day week is a, a good deal or not. The reason I say it that way is until the state tests are done uh, to show how they're doing in the reading, math, and basic skills, until we have those results, we really don't know if it's a good or it's bad. Because you're going to have to compare the four-day to the five-day. And until that comparison is done, uh, we're just guessing. And we're not about guessing. We're about what's right for the residents and their needs for their children. All right. Thanks. We're going to stick with you, Ken, and we're going to stick with some version of intelligence. You know, the real new, new, new thing here, artificial intelligence. And the question is, artificial intelligence is getting a lot of press at the moment. How might AI be used to improve system operations citywide. Can you repeat that, please, one more time? Absolutely. Artificial intelligence is getting a lot of press. How might AI be used to improve city system operations? Wow. You know, you've got mall incidents, you've got police incidents, uh, you got millions of dollars being paid out because uh, victims of the police chases. Um, also, things going on in our schools. Um, and it's just unbelievable, the things that we're seeing in today's society compared to when I grew up. Um, so, you know, it it can track problems is the way I feel. And it needs to be annually addressed as much as possible. But until we start doing these things, we're still kicking the can down the road. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Nick, AI, what do you think? How can that be used in an independence in an effective way? Um, I think it can help um, to a lot of degree. Like I know they used it this year on the snow routes, which helped out a lot to keep the roads plowed. Um, 
I think it it's the future, obviously. I mean, I you go to home or the store where I was at the other day and they had a cleaner going around the, the store doing the floors and there was nobody driving it and it, it stopped for you when you went in front of it. So I think there's many things to it. Um, it'll definitely help police fire um, routes, streets. I just, I mean, that's the future. That's what it's coming down to. So um, I think it'll help in that, that way. Okay. I, I messed up. Edward, what do you think? Well, there's a lot out there for AI. I know, like today, I had a phone call and it's all AI, and I got upset with it because I just wanted to talk to somebody. There is things that people need to talk to people, so we can't have everything AI. I mean, there's several times that people would like to talk to people instead of a computer. I mean, you go to McDonald's, you pull up there, and you're going to talk to the computer, but most of them seems like anymore. And sometimes they don't understand you then it takes time for them to get somebody there. So AI is good at certain things, but you also got to have the personnel there to help back it up because when something goes wrong, it goes wrong. So, I mean, there's lots of things AI is good for. I mean, like the snow plowing. I Even the snow plowing, I found out it wasn't 100% accurate. We still had some problems there, and they're going to have to work out that. They're also doing AI on street reading and things like that. So some of this stuff is not what it's – Count uh, supposed to be put it that way. So I mean, let's just don't rely everything on AI because there's still a lot of things that be done by people themselves, and let's don't try to put out other people working on different things. All right, thanks, uh, Nick. We're going to start with you on this one. Um, rehabbers are taking over our older neighborhoods, performing nice. superficial improvements, and raising prices threefold. I think we're talking about flippers here. Can independents establish a homestead tax freeze to protect older, long-term residents from being taxed out of their homes? Can they, what, was, what was the end question part of it? Sorry. The, the last question was, can independents establish a homestead tax freeze to protect older, long-time residents from being taxed out of their homes? And I see the, the 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 price of their homes rising because of improvements to houses around them. Yes, I think um, we need to take care of the elder, obviously. Um, you know, these older people that can't, they have no income. So I think at some point of age, maybe freeze their taxes. Um, I know that, and then some neighborhoods, even like the older neighborhoods, have tax abasements, which help a lot to keep people fixing their houses up, but also saves them on taxes. So there's different programs like that to help. I know by the Truman Home, they have that in some other neighborhoods. Um, the tax abatement helps a lot. Um, spend a little money, save on your taxes. But definitely the elder people, I think they need to hold a freeze, especially like Jackson County. Um, you can't tax these people to death. I know I have properties and it just goes back on the renters and it's just, it's a mess. So um, incomes don't keep the inflation and everything else is, is everything's too high. Everything's all at once. So we need to kind of get control of that. So thanks. All right. Um, again, what do you think about this issue? Well, first off, um, it's a statewide issue. Yes. The governor did sign the papers. Um, Right now, it doesn't affect me because I'm still under 65. I'm not um, I'm not drawing Social Security or anything like that. I'm going to explain this a little different when it comes to the housing side of it, of um, out-of-state guys coming in, investors and things. And so here's the way I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it the old farmer way. I could take my corn out of my field today and get $16 a bushel. If I wait two or three weeks down the road, I'm taking the chance of only getting $10 a bushel. Price difference, price difference. Same with investment. Um, it's federal rule laws where this is America. We have our United States Constitution. Uh, we have state laws. You know, they, 
there'd be a lot of trouble trying to change some of these laws to stop people from California, Florida, Michigan, or anybody like that trying to invest by buying property. Thank Great. you. All right. Thanks. Um, let's see. Uh, Edward. Yes. Okay. So basically you talked about freezing the tax money on houses that were owned by people probably for 30 years or something like that. that's what you're talking about. That's, that's it. And, and, and the, I think the intent of the question is that because people are coming in and buying houses, upgrading them, increasing the value and thereby having an effect on the tax base throughout these people are getting that kind of kind of uh, follow on issue right so you're saying the people who live in their houses for 30 years and now their taxes are tripling up in effect because the next door neighbor's house is worth more um like ken said they signed that bill so that but it's only for 65 and older but like I say that that is not quite right. We could look into freezing people's, I wouldn't say freeze it because they should know that the price of their house goes up. And basically they might not sell that house. They may give it to their children and then they never did sell the house. So if you put a price on the house, say they bought it for $5,000 30 years ago and now the house is worth $100,000, but they give it to the kids, they, they never bought it. So you can't freeze the $5,000, you do have to make it go up, but there should be a low rate, probably only like 5% max a year or every two or three years and not go up tenfold or 30 or 100%, 150% like they did on some of the taxes now. So yes, there is a way to do it. It's just we need to look at it wisely and get it on the books correctly and not just guess about it. So there is a way to do it, which just needs to be done correctly. Yes. Thank you. We're going to stay with you, uh, Edward, uh, okay. on a completely different question. And again, this came from residents. Have you had any discussion with parents of transgender children or doctors who treat transgender children to hear the impact proposed legislation would have on them or their family? If so, what have you found in these discussions? If not, what do you think? I have not talked to anybody about transgender. I have not heard anybody say anything about transgender. You hear it on the media all the time. Uh, we do need to keep the books and everything to in the schools. We need to keep it out of the schools. We need to not be telling people what the kids, what they are, what gender they are, and things like that. But it's everything needs to do is to do neutral in the school in the schools. I mean, we don't need to force things down kids throats and everything like that and that's one thing that's out there so i mean i like myself i'm not heard anything from anybody about transgender i do see it um but i have never had to deal with it myself put it that way okay um ken to you well first off i'm not a doctor um but i will listen and work for the residents of all. Race, color, choice of family, choice of sex. When I'm elected, I will work for all. And no, I have not spoken or heard anything of transgender. Okay. All right. Nick, what's your thoughts on this topic? I have not either heard anything on transgender. Um, I know it's out there. Social media is a big deal with it or whatever. Um, I haven't heard anything, so I don't really have much input. Um, it doesn't really affect me. Um, like Ken said, I, it doesn't matter color, race, gender, transgender. It doesn't bother you. Listen to everyone. So that's all I have. Okay. Yeah, that's a hard one to uh, personalize, I think, for a lot of people. And and um, I, I get that difficulty. Um Oh, let's see. Gosh, we couldn't go without mentioning climate change. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Edward. Um, this question says, there are ongoing concerns about climate change. We have lost many trees due, due to weather events, old age, and diseases. 
at the same time, our city is getting hotter due to so many concrete roads and parking lots. What would you do about this? Okay, we already have a program going in effect, I think, where we're going out and marking trees and looking at trees. Plus, the, the power people do that all the time. I mean, trees trees do have a life. we got to realize trees do have a life, especially in the Midwest, because we have droughts, we have heat, we have things like that. I mean, they do have a life, the trees do. So, I mean, that's something we need to focus on. I mean, yes, we do have a lot of down trees and things like that. But people need to know that they need to maintain their own trees on their own property. It's not the city's responsibility to maintain the trees. I mean, we do go along and keep them out of the power lines, but we can't maintain everybody's trees on their property. And I, think the, I know I think a lot the of people, angle. I think the angle of this question is something to do with climate change. With climate change. Okay, but now no basically, problem. okay. So you think we're getting? Same they same they, they, they think no we're problem. getting hotter due to the streets and all that and all the different things. But you got to realize when we put up new businesses, they do have to put in new trees and supply shade areas. So that helps with the climate control. And I, honestly, climate control, I don't think, is a little bit far-fetched, my opinion. Okay. All right. Um, Ken, what do you think on this issue? Repeat your question one more time. Yes, sir. There are ongoing concerns about climate change. We have lost many trees due to weather events, old age, and diseases. At the same time, our city is getting hotter due to so many concrete roads and parking lots. What would you do about this? Well... First off, I'm not the creator of this world. I believe uh, God, and this is in his hands. But we can help by planting more trees. We can help by making more greener spots. Um, maybe even, I don't want to use because I'm for IPNL, maybe different type of generation. But I'm not for that type of generation, but that's the only way to go greener. Um, our city a few years ago launched a go green program. Well, all of a sudden they turn around and instead of buying vehicles to go green, they bought big gas guzzlers. Their excuse was uh, they get more money on their return when they go to resell. Um, but again, the most important thing is clean energy. Okay. Nick, what do you think? Nick's gone. We lost him. Hello? Where'd you go, Nick? We'll give him a little time to come back in here. That hasn't happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Butch, Murphy's, are you still here? Murphy's here. Yes. And he's uh, completely out of the panelist list. Yeah, I, I see that. And we're sorry to hear that. Yeah, because I was going to get to the point where you could find the question I didn't ask. How you doing, Butch? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm just sitting here waiting. Chiefs? I wonder what happened to Nick. Nick just disappeared. How about them Chiefs, eh? There we go. <laughs> oh, I hope somebody can. Uh, Terry, are you trying to reach him on phone? Sounds like AT and T. I can try and do that. <laughs> Thank you. Or T Mobile. We do have we do have phone numbers. So uh, just that's for great. This, just yeah. for this event. That's great. Now, just. Side note here, it would be great if everybody showed up. Uh, it's always good when we can get more people to the to the dance and and uh, to these events. Did you guys participate in the Chamber of Commerce uh, forums? Yes. Yes, okay. yes. How, how did that yes. go for you? It went great. I think it went good. Yeah. How were the questions yes. compared to what we're asking? <laughs> uh, these are a whole lot better questions. These are a really? whole lot better questions. Well, I'm, I'm, I feel good. <laughs> These came from residents, by the way. We didn't make these up. So um, good. And you had a lot of people at the event, right? It's a pretty big room. Oh, well, the room only holds like 30 people. So there oh. wasn't, yeah, it doesn't hold a whole bunch. No, it only holds about 30. And basically you have 
basically everybody's families there, and that's about about all the room you have. And then you have a few chamber of commerce people. I see. Okay. We're we're posting, by the way, we're posting the video from that on our uh, YouTube channel too. So uh, Fantastic. I, will, I will say this at the end, but I'll say it now since we're kind of in, in pause mode, but uh, get to our channel and uh, on our website. Andy. Yes. Um, I just talked to Nick. He, his computer, something went on, but he's going to try and get in on his phone. Okay. We'll give him a little bit of time here. So, uh, but make sure that you, you know, get your, get this out, get uh, Chamber of Commerce, whatever out, those links to your uh, uh, people you're trying to reach. Uh, and uh, that way they get more exposure to you. And uh, I'm going to make the pitch every time. Do what you can to get turnout. I know you right. want that's, turnout that's for yourself. It's going to be turnout. Yes. Yeah. But the, everybody wants uh, their own votes, but. I'm happy when more people vote. Doesn't right. matter what the issue is, more people we get, more closely it aligns with who we are. So uh, and we just gotta hope for again, one of the questions that you know we spoke about earlier, the city charter and the changes and things like that. Uh one of the bigger things that they're also wanting within our the new city charter is no primary election. Hmm. In other words, we have four in our uh district three. We wouldn't be having this until April. And uh, one with the highest number of votes wins. Have you thought about using ranked choice voting? You know what that is. What'd you say again? Ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting means that people can get, get to vote for more than one person. And they put them in the order they prefer them. And the okay. top vote getters move forward. And the people that have the lowest vote counts uh support the the others so there's never any primaries required mm -hmm. so that so way, that, what that does it does a couple of things one it increases turnouts because people realize they have more than one choice they can give the other thing right. is it encourages people who are not necessarily in the democratic or republican party and it encourages third parties and fourth parties and fifth parties to participate so uh, we're we're seeing some movement at a small local level to try these things out and to show people how they work, and it it gets rid of the need for a primary. Okay. Uh, and it increases participation, so it's it's kind of an idea that may gain traction over time. And and, and I like what you're saying. And the biggest thing is my understanding is because of it, it really puts a burden on the city financial wise yes to run to run this type of an election as a primary you sure. know um, it's a cost it's absolutely a cost and it's a cost uh, and we're paying getting, getting people County to come out once paying. getting people to come out once instead of twice you know so. yes so jeopardy theme something here <laughs> Ah, oh, there he is. Hey, hey, hey. He's back. He's back. The next question goes to Nick Huff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've been talking about you. So I think we got through everything on that. So I'm going to close here with the, with the and I'm just going to pick people at random. The question is going to be, what question should I ask and what is your answer? So Nick, since you're the, the last one in here, I'm going to, I'm going to put it on you. You got to turn off your mute first. Okay. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yep. I apologize for that. Um, right. Minute and a half. Cheryl, start him up. Um, a question you didn't ask that. Wait a minute. Like this is not. This is not closing. This is the last question, and we'll do closing after that. What was? So, what's the last question? The. This is it. What question oh, what should you, I have asked, and what's your what answer? You should, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what you should ask probably what I thought would be about the blight um, independence. Um, I think we have a big problem with that. Um, I think the city needs to go down a different road instead of just putting liens on it. I think they need to do find more ways in litigation, um, take the landlords to court, maybe hold them more accountable to tear these buildings down or do what's necessary because the blight is causing a lot of problems with the homeless and the crime. Um, so that'd be one question. Maybe. Thank Dealing you. with blight. Okay. 
uh, uh, Edward, what do you think is the question I should have asked? And you'd like in your answer for that? Well, I'm, I'm part to, you didn't ask anything about streets. I mean, we got streets that are in bad need repair. I mean, we have so many streets that are over in the older neighborhoods that don't even have sidewalks. They, you guys don't even bring up sidewalks. We have 39th, 35th Street, don't even have sidewalks that people can walk down or walk around. Since we try to encourage people to walk to places, we need sidewalks, and we don't even try to do anything about sidewalks in the elder neighborhoods. I know when they build new neighborhoods, they have to put in sidewalks, but we have people out there, neighborhoods that have no sidewalks, and people have to walk and walk out of dish, di ditches, and they have nowhere to walk. And, I mean, that's things that people we need to look at to get these people more friendly to each other so they can walk to their neighbors and walk around the neighborhoods instead of trying to dodge cars and things like that. They're worried about bicycles, too. You guys didn't say anything about bicycles. And I know Kansas City put in bicycle lanes, and they're – honestly, I don't see that many people bicycle. We need to look hard at – I know the street – Complete street wants bicycle stuff, but how many people are going to use these bicycle lanes? I do not see that many people riding bicycles, and I drive around this city every day. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Ken, what do you think? Uh, question I should have asked in, in your answer. The GO bond. I thought you would have really asked about the GO bond. My answer to this is residents of independence. We're gonna get a lot of information on this GO bond. I'm not saying I'm in favor of the GO bond and I'm not saying I'm against the GO bond. What I'm saying is listen at who's talking, what they're trying to feed you and where it goes. It will be you, the residents that make this choice not me by myself. Okay, thanks very much. All right, we're gonna do closing statements now and, and we're gonna do it in reverse order of what we did question one. So Ken, you're first up with two minutes, your closing statement. <laughs> first off, I wanna thank the Women's League of Voters for having us tonight. Uh, I am Kenneth Love. I am a voice that the residents can hear. Some say I talk a little loud. That's one of, the, one of them Southern accent things. Yes, I do talk a little loud. I feel I am the best vote for the residents of Independence due to my knowledge of streets, my knowledge of sewer, my knowledge of water. There, I, I have so much knowledge and I'm ready to go to work for you, the residents for the best of your needs. This is not about Kenneth Love. This is about electing Kenneth Love to be your counsel, so I will be there to listen and advocate for the people. If you live in the first district, second district, third district, fourth district, I don't care. If there's an issue, I wanna hear it. That way, if I could advocate to your councilman, maybe, Maybe there's a little cross wire going, but you got to remember, I'm also a guy that's wanting to address um, mental health awareness priorities. Uh, I want to address homeless problems. Um, I'm tired of kicking the can down the road. We need to address these problems. Let's not forget that something has really hurt us in the past is the Bass Pro. Where is that money? Why isn't our city doing things? I will push for our city to go after the money that these people owe us as residents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nick, you're closing. Again, thank you, the League of Women Voters. And I can apologize for my computer. I still don't know what's wrong with it, but um, no problem. Um, it's time for a new vision. And independence. I'm running due to the selective hearing and political deafness of the current council. I believe public safety and generation are our top priorities. 
I also believe that Independence is a great place to live, work, and raise a family, and which is why I will continue to emphasize the need for complete transparency. No more being ignored. I will be your voice. Vote Nick Huff, February 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Edward. Thank you again for having me here. Uh, the reason to vote for me for city council is that we got to look at the third district. There's a lot going on in the third district. We have new, uh, what I want to say, new apartments coming in. We need to make sure they're done properly. I mean, I tried to vote some of them out and some of them in. We need to look at them to make sure they get put in properly because we don't have a lot more people coming into this third district. We need to make sure we save something out there at the Independence Center. I don't know. We need to get addressed what's going to happen out there because I don't know if that Independence Center is going to stay much longer because if you look and I look, we don't have the people out there to keep it going. So we need to figure out what we're going to do about the Independence Center. And then also we got the new stuff going down there on Little Blue Parkway. This road, when I was asked about it in Planning Commission, I asked if this road could handle semis. Oh, yeah, I can. Well, guess what? Now they're coming back saying this road can't handle semi. So people have been lying to us about what's happening over here in the third district. And we are not getting the proper answers that need to be done. So that's why if I'm on the council, I would properly get the right answers and get it voiced out to the people of what's going on in the third district. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, really appreciate your guys showing up and giving your uh, great answers for these questions. Uh, good luck in your races. Uh, encourage everyone you can uh, talk to to vote, to turn out and uh, participate in the elections. Uh, Anitra, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, candidates, and, and thank you, Sandy. Thank you, audience, for your thought-provoking questions and your interest in the February 6th Independence City Council primary election. We also want to thank our moderator, Sandy Eads. A recording of this forum will be available on the League's website, lwvkc.org. Please take a minute to share our candidate forums via your Facebook page, Nextdoor, or other favorite social media channels. And remember, for complete voting and candidate information, visit lwvkc.org and vote411.org. We hope to see you at the polls. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.